So as I start to disassemble this thing, I realize I got to get this overarm out, but it won't budge. So I grabbed a piece of belt strapping and uh, a pipe wrench just to move it. Couldn't get anything. So there's a hole in it. I'm pretty amazed there. There's a hole in it. I put a stainless steel bolt and nut with a washer on it. So I'm not actually touching the real steel. I'm just touching that nut and bolt and I get it to move. And now that it's moving, I take the locking uh, handles off of there and try to just get the thing to move. Well, I thought it was just rust in there or something, but it's not. Hercules couldn't get that thing to move. So I go on and start disassembling around it. And make sure you set your selector on a 3,000th per revolution feed rate or you'll damage the gears coming out of here. And you see the gears later on in the video. So now I take everything here and I stick it in its uh, bag it. So bag it and tag it. I didn't tag it because I know where it goes, but I just bagged everything that goes together together. Still trying to get that overarm out, with, can't do it. So I start trying to get other pieces off around it. There are two Allens on this one and I got that those loose and I got that Allen loose, but this doesn't seem to wanna, wanna come off of here. So we'll see if we can there it goes. Gently massage that. This thing should come out. Here we go. Look at that. Okay. I think I'll leave that like that for now. Because I just want to get this back thing off of here. Screw, set screw, another set screw. So no amount of twisting or pulling could get that out of there. So I just took it over to my press and decided to press it out. And that's the way you get an overarm out. 
boys and girls. The commentary of people who... All right, let me show you. Job 24. So there are a couple of pins in there that I just knock out, and now it's time to pull things apart. Now you can see how those gears are kind of horizontal in there, and that's they got to be like that when you pull it off the machine, or you'll tear it up. And I do believe that's the three thousandths setting on there. And now when I just I just want to see how this will clean up, and wow, it cleaned up pretty nice. And here starts the cleaning process. I am um, just using some purple power and a little tray I got from Walmart. And just want to clean up all the grease and grime uh, before I start taking the paint off of it. And this thing is filthy. And here I'm just taking off the little tag that's the change o window there and uh, want to get that thing cleaned up. Now you talk about dirty. This has dirt and grime from the minor 49er era. Now here on the back side there is rust, but uh, also grease too, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up as well. Now listen guys, if you're going to use a toothbrush, the word is out that you use your wife's toothbrush, and that's true. But don't be a savage, at least rinse it off when you put it back. More pins to remove. Because he hears the voice of the Lord talking to him. Verse 11 says, saying, Now I thought this thing would just easily slide out of there. But uh, once I get it out, I realize that whoever tightened that thing up, they put some serious torque on it and it is bent. And there you can see the little slight bow in that thing. I'm going to try to figure out how to straighten it out. Now it's time to strip all the badging off the main thing here, take everything off of it, and start getting it cleaned up as well. And yes, this thing is filthy. It's absolutely amazing to me what a little cleaning will do. It starts bringing back the color of the old paint. You think that the thing is brown, but it turns out it's it's not. It's a gray color or a blue color or whatever, but my goodness, is there a lot of gunk on this thing.
I waited till last to do this headstock because, quite frankly, it intimidates me, and uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do it. However, there's a guy on there, and I just don't know how to pronounce his channel name, but he has a four-part series where he takes this down and, and puts it back together, and I'm telling you, down to the nut and bolt, I'll be watching his videos. It's I don't know how to pronounce it, but maybe G Hosties or Ghosties. But anyway, he's got it a, a excellent series on how to do this. So I watched that and now I'm using his techniques to take this thing apart. There are pins everywhere, so I have to kind of knock a pin here, knock a pin here out of there, and uh, slowly remove the stuff out of the headstock. Now here I am gently tapping this thing because I'm looking for there's a key on the, on the one side and I'm just trying to find out where that key is so I'll tap 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 trying to find out and line the key up with the slot to get it out. Now this boys and girls starts the real struggle which I'm trying to get this one part out of two sides of there and I'm telling you it fights me for weeks. I am having a devil of a time getting those things out and uh, I think I found a way. Um, I made a little Rube Goldberg device and let's see if it works. I think it will. So out of the pop can aluminum, I made a little, like a pulling type of thing here. And out of that uh, bowling alley piece of scrap metal, I made a little thing like this. And let's see if we can get this off of here. So that piece threads down onto the bolt that's already on there. And once it's on there, now I'm going to be using that to pull the entire bolt off. Well, I ground two flats up at the top there to hold with vice grips just so the whole thing doesn't rotate. Now, the first time I did this, I just used the crescent wrench on the other side and was tightening it down. And it should pull it up because there's a, a square bolt down in there. But there's so much torque on there to get it to move. It actually broke the little thing and spun around. It, it broke the bolt itself. So this is the revision of it. moving now here's the thing that's killing me there's a piece of rubber that's um, a stop in there so I got to kind of cut that out now I was going I knew I was going to ruin that but uh, I have to because uh, nothing else is working to get that thing out but you can see the lower ones coming out and that's pulling and squeezing on that rubber and I'm gonna cut that out and try to get that thing pulled up through there 
And as you can see, it is coming out of there, but it's taking a considerable amount of force. And now I need a, even a spacer in here because it's got to go so far to get out of there. I'm having to improvise and make stuff. Okay, I got it raised up now above the, the level there. And now, try to get that baby off. Boy, this thing is going to fight me the whole way. I can tell what it's done. It's done stripped in here again like it's, it's stripped a couple times here and right under where it is and right there it's stripped again. So I enlarge that hole. That'll fit down over that. Threaded that. I'm going to bolt. And I got to go grind some flats on that. So I ground some flats to hold it with the vice grips and put some spacers on there and there she goes. Now this is a three piece thing. It's two metal pieces and a rubber piece. The rubber piece I had to cut out. The first metal piece came out and here comes the second metal piece. And there you can see that square head bolt down there. And this other one, holy moly, um, took me a whole bunch of finagling and finally I got that one up to where I could just get it above the rim. And now I'm going to get this last one out. And there's still a piece caught in this one. This thing is fighting the entire time. Alright. Well, this one's all the way out. This one broke off down in there and uh, got to figure out how to get that baby out of there now. Well, I got that baby. Oops. <laughs> what just happened? Oh, it just fell apart now. All right, good. Good, good, good. good. All right. So, that hole is now good. Both sides. Holy cannoli. That was a chore and a half getting out of there. And a couple weeks.